again. Morning, folks. How are you? So let me go ahead and stick in the chat the link to add yourself to the meeting minutes. You can go ahead and add yourself there. <clears throat> um, so also, these meetings are recorded um, from the very beginning of the meeting, and then they get posted on YouTube. Um, and it typically takes eh, about five minutes for everybody to start showing up. So cool. So again, here's the link for adding yourself to the meeting minutes. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. So I understand that there's a meeting just before this, and that's part of what slowed folks down a little. Um, we also have here's the link for people to add themselves to the agenda as attendees. And um, we usually start in about a couple minutes here, so we usually give folks to about five after. Had a quick question before we start because today we had our Asian call in the morning, so we did a quick uh, review of what happened. And I know that uh, there, there, there was supposed to be a, a network service mesh YouTube channel. Um, is this a thing or we kind it's, of? It's, I, I'm literally actively working on it. So I've got from the um, Linux Foundation staff, I have the first seven talks that I've just downloaded that I'm going to put up on the YouTube channel and then link in from the talks page. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still waiting on the rest of the talks. One of the things that we may actually choose to discuss in this meeting is whether or not to post the talk videos as I get them in hand on YouTube in terms of revealing them or to wait until we have all of them and do it as a big bang. I'm fine either way. Um, I can actually make good arguments okay. for, for both of them. Um, you know, and, and I would strongly urge you to put a, a, a recap item on the agenda for the morning meeting. I think it's really good for us to have a sense of what happened in the Asia meeting. Okay. So, um, so that all of that is, is pure goodness. So. Well, so do you want to get going? Do, would someone be willing to share the meeting, uh, the agenda? Uh, you beat me to asking.
Cool. Well, while we, oh, there it is. <coughs> Great. So welcome to another um, NSM weekly call. Um, thank you for uh, showing up. And uh, I wanted to uh, make a mention. Um, actually, we're going right into the meeting. I'll talk about it afterwards. So we have uh, this meeting, which occurs every uh, 8 a.m. on uh, Pacific time on Tuesday. Uh, we have, uh, we don't have the, um, the weekly call listed on the, uh, in the recurring, so we need to add that in. Um, but that happens bi-weekly every Tuesday at 8 a.m. GMT. We have the CNCF networking working group that's, uh, that's in the process of being rebooted. They had a talk about it last, uh, KubeCon, which unfortunately I had a conflict. Uh, I, I will definitely catch up on it myself, uh, but we we should make sure that the time there is uh, is, is not conflicting with us, and uh, recommend if the time slots for them if they are. <coughs> we have uh, KubeCon just uh, just wrapped up, and uh, we'll cover KubeCon after the major events uh, overview. We have DevConf coming up. Um, speaker acceptance letters should already be sent, uh, so uh, we should know whether Radoslav and, uh, and Ivana are going to talk, and uh, Nikolai with uh, building a 4GLT network and cloud native video processing. We have FOSDEM coming up. Uh, the proposals close on the 1st of December, so if you intend to talk at FOSDEM in Brussels, uh, please. Um, uh, please get your proposal in as soon as possible because you have less than a week. We have uh, KubeCon coming up and uh, in the RAI in Amsterdam and the proposals are currently open. They close on Wednesday, December 4th. So I am not sure what, uh, what time zone they close in. So uh, please get them in by please get them in by December 3rd at the, at the latest. Um, the proposals will be announced in, uh, in late January. We have ONES coming up uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, the, event UR, the event URL and uh, proposal deadline is to be determined. Uh, that will be on April 20th through 21st. So uh, almost back to back with uh, KubeCon. And with that, um, let's jump into uh, the social media community team first, and then we'll do a re, uh, and then we'll we'll start with the, the main agenda. So, Lucina, are you on? I'm guessing they, yep, they're not. So, they am guessing they have a meeting right now. So, um, network service mesh call stats. Um, where these were written on the 26th. So we had plus, we had an additional 61 followers. We followed an additional 26 people and we had 800 and uh, we, we now have reached 840 tweets. So we produced 148 tweets during, uh, during the last two week cycle. We have posted uh, NSMCon sessions, live tweets, etc., And all the slides, uh, or most of the slides, if not all of them, are published, and the video of the sessions at KubeCon are linked in, in the uh, in the agenda. You can also find them on Network Service Mesh uh, website. Uh, I believe in the events page. You can go down to the to the NSMCon section and, and see it there. And we do not have any LinkedIn account stats yet, uh, but that should be coming soon. And there is a plan to post to cross post the uh, between Twitter and LinkedIn via Hootsuite. Uh, and with that, let's jump into the NSMCon KubeCon recap. So let's start with uh, NSMCon. Uh, who, who wants to talk first? Uh, again, I can start. Um, I know that there are other people that probably can share some other thoughts. Okay, so um, <clears throat> of course. Uh, it was the most uh, NSM-ish event of all <laughs> till now. Uh, so we started with the NSM con, full day of 
network service mesh only talks it was really really exciting to see what what people are are doing with nsm i, I was not aware of how the things that were pre presented um, and um, i think that we had a really good um, audience uh, response lots of uh, talks uh, in between the like during the breaks um probably not so much questions in life because people like probably are more new to the problems and uh, um, I don't know maybe we need to analyze this more more d deeply how to how to make people more welcome and ask more questions feel more like probably make it a little bit more interactive um, this is essentially the uh, NSM con uh, then uh, we had a number of um, very 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 interesting meetings which i think that if at least maybe okay not how but at least a quarter of these meetings are coming to some uh, like real follow-ups with real people joining the community etc this will still be a huge huge thing for us but we had very very interesting uh, meetings and talks with uh, various uh, other c communities and things i don't know what we can and should share but <laughs> There are lots of things coming on our our way, and probably the first one is probably uh, this. Um, we have a PR from uh, uh, Intel uh, regarding KSROV, which is like one of the things that that's really, uh, I think, powerful for us. Uh, I mean, like uh, from participation, from uh, you know, uh, functionality. Um, so this is kind of a sign of, of good things coming our way. Then uh, we were part of a couple of uh, telecom user group and CNTT meetings. Uh, we had uh, presented, um, me and Ivana were uh, talking about NSM, some kind of intros, uh, um, like to the, to the subject. Um, I think that this is, uh, you know, we are trying to, to, to keep our uh, position there. Uh, be um, like a strong pro proposition for um, the telco do domain um, and then the last day um, we had uh, I think about 300 people joining our 90 minute talk uh, which was which was great I mean um, I personally had some concerns if we would be able to keep the attention of the people for so long uh, but uh, I think that that it worked, and I would definitely consider having a long one longer talk again in Amsterdam than two two shorter ones. I don't know. At least that's my my feeling. Um, and uh, that's more or less my recap. Cool. No, I mean, I I, I also like the NSM con. There were a couple things that that sort of shocked me in terms of how successful it was, in large part because. Um, I've done a lot of co-located events in various places, and we had a few things that just never happened. Uh, the first is we had between 80 and 90% of the people um, who were registered actually turned up in the room uh, in the morning. And that just never happens, right? So that was a really good sign. And then in the afternoon, we actually started getting this, this interesting effect because in the afternoon, a whole bunch of people started wandering in who weren't registered, but who were in the other co-located events in the afternoon we got a little bit more easy going about folks getting in although you had to be going to some co-located event in order to get up there uh, they were kind of strict about that and so we got to the point where most of the seats in the front were full and we had most of the, the space in the back where people were standing around was was full and so it was it was definitely a really good room um so that was really good i, I was also super pleased by the breadth of talks we got from the community um one of the jokes that i made for the five cool things you could do with network service mesh is that you know if the, the zeroth cool thing you can do is you can borrow content from the broader community to give your five cool things talk because quite a few of the use cases we talked about there, and that video is already up on YouTube by the way, were literally um, borrowed with permission from talks that were given at NSMCon. Um, so it was just it was super exciting, and and I'm I'm expecting we'll probably do an NSMCon again at KubeCon EU. So, and then, you know, also the, the, the five cool things talk went well, there were all kinds of people wandering up who were interested in NSM con. Um, I gave a couple of booth talks on it that were extremely well attended. So just overall, there was a ton of interest um, in what we're doing here. 
Oh, and there was a keynote mention. So we, we, we had keynote stage support as well. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'd like to add, uh, out of that, uh, oh. the NSM con went uh, really, really well. And uh, most of the, you know, usually when there is some a call conference during KubeCon, some people attend by some interest, but uh, uh, and not all of them particularly for everything. While here, it was the feeling that everyone is highly interested in everything that is said. And it was more like uh, university lectures than uh, than a conference in terms of uh, how people react. They were uh, discussing uh, most of the. Uh, uh, every topic and they had a lot of questions we had a uh, panel discussion after that and i never saw such high interest on a uh, call conference at kubecon at least the previous uh, ones that i attended uh, not related to nsm and it was really great and the content uh, it, it was great to see so many people uh, uh, applying NSM to their use cases. Uh, it was inspiration for us um, what to focus next. Uh, also, we've, we were invited to the Telco user group who shared about NSM there. Um, and we had some ongoing discussions about a demo with NSM uh, for the Mobile World Congress together with the CNCF testbed people. We also had uh, some discussions about NSM itself, ideas of improvements and what the future focused to be on. I will not get into detail now, not to consume time, but we can discuss them in, that in some of the next meetings. Yeah, I think, um... Overall, I'm very happy with the uh, with the result. Uh, and so, in terms of uh, things that could have gone better, um, I would have definitely have appreciated a uh, a larger a larger room because uh, it, it's clear that the uh, we had we had enough people there, enough interest that we we're pulling from other from other areas, and uh, we got to the point where our wait list needed a wait list, and so. We definitely have, um, we, we got the largest room that we were able to get at the time, but <clears throat> my recommendation is that we start early for the next NSM con now that we know that it's going to happen sooner than later. Um, and so, um, either I believe that there's still, that there's, <clears throat> that there's still larger rooms available for, for Amsterdam, but once they become available for Boston, uh, I, I propose that we uh, try to snag one of the one of the larger rooms uh, as as soon as possible. Well, yeah, I know that there there's some rumbling in the background about um, getting a bigger room for NSMCon EU in in March at KubeCon. So hopefully that 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 will come together shortly. And I know that you know it's just we are all very tired. We are so tired. <laughs> it was an amazing week. Um. I think that that here's the time to thank again uh, our amazing uh, helpers in organizing this, uh, Gary and Suzanne, and I forgot the name of the the other lady. Sorry, uh, Melissa. Melissa. Yeah. Oh, Melissa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's unbelievable how much they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I wanted to call them out again. Like they were absolutely fantastic, and even though. Um, the companies may have some differences between the two of them. Uh, and they, when, when it came down to running an SM con, uh, I mean, it, it was, it was absolutely fantastic. Like, uh, the, the, the event ran like clockwork, uh, and a very large part of the reason, or I would say most of the reason why is because of their, their efforts. So like, um, and I, I got contributor stickers to two of them. We, we need to work out how to give one to, to Melissa. Uh, so. um, and that, that actually brings me back around to something else. And I know I've actually solicited this on NSM, a uh, pound NSM dev as well. Um, for folks who have, are contributors to Network Service Mesh, if you can uh, direct message me on Slack and get me your t-shirt size and an address to send it to, 
Um, I should have a bunch of t-shirts from the event that I can send out to people um, and, and other swag like contributor stickers and that kind of stuff. Because uh, we, we do appreciate all the folks, the things that people do, even if they don't necessarily manage to make it to the conferences. I was just going to mention that there were pretty good t-shirts with the new logo. And, and they're soft. And they're high, they're high quality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. So anything else that folks wanted to bring up about KubeCon and the recap there? Um, I was disappointed that there were no magnets uh, other than that. <laughs> Well, there were I'm stickers excited. with magnets on them, but but no, not magnets. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stickers were the magnets. Um. Yeah, uh, so the, 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 this this was actually brought up. Um, so, but yeah, no, the, the 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 just for those who went there, there was a joke about the editor argument among you know developers. You know, people in favor of Emacs, and people in favor of Vim, and you know, and then the the, the punchline of the cartoon is real developers use magnets to move the inodes by on the disk by hand. Um, so there's a magnet theme. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not able to program because of that. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that we also should call out to our uh, uh, social media community team, who are absolutely fantastic at kind of just uh, uploading everything in real time. It's like they were covering the, the event and they very uh, kind of a lot of details. At least from what I can tell. So. Oh yeah, no. The, thank you. Lucina and Ashley did a brilliant job. Um, mm -hmm. They were all over it, and and it's much appreciated. They do such an amazing job. I've literally had multiple different people ask, you know, if we've got professional social media support, um, and oh, what we really uh, just have as a kick-ass community. Also, Ashley, uh, she was also helping there from what I saw. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually think Lucina outperforms um, many of the professional groups because um, she's involved personally and, uh, and joining these particular calls and, and helps us in a variety of other ways. So she's very in tune with what the community is doing. So, um, and, and I think that helps uh, compared to when you're a few steps away and you're asked, please promote this thing. So. Oh, she does an amazing job, though. Like, I'm super, super happy. Um, I'm sure we're missing somebody to thank as well. So if we missed you, thank you. Um, cool. So we have so we have the uh, Asia call. So let's let's hop on to on to that. Can you give us can somebody who was there give us a recap? Uh, so essentially, we did a quick recap of the KubeCon and SMCon. There were a couple of questions regarding where they can find uh, the videos from NSMCon. Um, and then we quickly went through the pending uh, SRV6 uh, because I was recommending Daniel's uh, talk. I mean, actually all the talks, but especially Daniel's talk, which was last, but was like a lots and lots of interesting uh, and then we went quickly through the SRV6 status um, of like this PR that we have for support there. Um, and uh, we learned from um, Alex, if I'm not mistaking the names, um, or Denise, was it Denise? Or Artyom, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm probably mixing the name, sorry. Uh, but the contributor there for the SRV6 uh, um, enlighten us of what the status that there is a pending PR for the upstream uh, DPP agent and etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, that's more or less uh, what we what we did <clears throat> yeah no I mean uh, yeah, Daniel's talk was just hysterical um, he literally gave less than a sentence to some things that were super profound like the fact that he has now run NSM on a white box switch yeah and it didn't even get a full sentence. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was like going to, through the slides the other day and I was, wow, this is, this is so awesome. I mean, the moment that we'll be able to de demo this and I hope that this is, yeah, okay, let's let's get down to the uh, VO3 uh, release and then we'll, we'll speak about well, this. Before we do, I think we do have an item on the, the VO2 release notes. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
because Ivana did notice that in our rush to try and get the release out after lunch at NSMCon, mm -hmm. <laughs> that maybe we should have done release notes. Yeah, we, we, we had a choice. We, we could either do the documentation or do the release notes. Uh, and so we chose the documentation. But uh, no, actually, the real answer is we, is we forgot. We're, we're sorry. Um, yeah, we, we're, are you going go anywhere? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, Lucina raised the topic because she wants to share uh, more and she found out, she asked me, do we have release notes? And I said, no. <laughs> so uh, I did some uh, scratch and I, I looked through the content from what we discussed on preview previous calls uh, some on github and try to make some draft with all the key features bug fixes etc uh, and if uh, I, I know it, they can be written from someone or everyone that worked on something can add few lines uh, if possible that would be more productive i think yeah no I, I appreciate your start i was actually quite impressed how much you captured there um I, I had forgotten how much we'd done. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, would you, can we have like a, a small checklist of things to do to check before we cut releases and we can check, have we properly created the branches or have we properly published to, to uh, the uh, image repo? Have we created the release notes? Yeah, I, I think you recall that, that, that in, in the document that Nikolai wrote for releases, there probably is some of that, but capturing a checklist would be good because I don't actually even remember the steps that I took. And I know that I wasn't the only one taking steps. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and for the next release, we can be more we can be more prominent about it. And that also reminds me that, th thank you for bringing this up, Ivana. One of the things that I am going to start doing uh, at the, uh, during each meeting is I'm going to ask people to uh, to include any information that is relevant into the next set of release notes. So we build them over time, not at the last minute. And it's very likely that we left something important out of the current release notes because of our because of our process. Uh, and so, uh, sorry. Uh no, I'm interrupting you. Uh, for the okay. old ones, uh, can we put some deadline maybe because otherwise we can postpone adding them and... Yeah, so yeah, this, this, to... this would be my suggestion in terms of, I, I think you're absolutely right, let's get a deadline on the, release two, the V0.2 release notes. Um, I would suggest that we make that deadline not next week, but the week after. And the reason I would suggest that is because this week is a holiday in the US and a whole lot of people are already out this week. So they may, the first they may discover about the release notes might be next week. And so then if we close them the week after, um, then we give everybody an opportunity to contribute to them. So rather than the third, maybe looking at the 10th of December. Um, does, that, does that sound good to folks? Yep. Cool. <clears throat> cool. And um, is there anything else that we want to talk about on the zero two zero release notes? If not, then let's move on to zero three zero. Uh, with what do we with what do we want? Um, who wants to kick this one off? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick this off. Um, so the last couple of releases we put together, we we've sort of we we've we've busily worked at things, and then um, we sort of realized, oh my God, KubeCon is coming, um, and then we've tried to get a release together, and 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 we were at a stage in development where that actually made a ton of sense, um, but. We seemed like it would be useful and healthy to start talking at the beginning of the cycle about sort of what folks, what things folks would like to see. And I'd actually like to see more things in this list. Most of the things on the list I just threw together as part of the initial throwing things together. I'd love to see more things on this list from other people who are not me. Um, but you know, this is think of this as a candidate list to try and help us sort of focus our attention um, on what we want to get done for V0.3. 
0.3, given that we're probably talking about going into cube kind of u with it. Um, and so the list I start first put up is we, we right now we've got the proposal for the NSM forwarded to cross connect NSC refactor, and that I think probably we want to get done sooner rather than later. We've got some um, work already underway where Wayne is working on dynamic matches, uh, which if you've not looked at the dynamic match issue, um, they'll let us do some very, very interesting things like um, when a request comes in to get to a network service, uh, routing it to something providing the network service on the same node. Um, or, and it not just node, but like you could do any kind of topological construct there. Um, you've got another one here is it turns out with dynamic matches, it gets really easy to do on demand NSC creation um, at the topology that you care about. So those were sort of two that went together in my mind. Um, we had a huge amount of interest in the VL3 examples, uh, database replication over an interdomain VL3 um, and Istio over an editor domain VL3. People were super excited about that um, and about other things you could do there. Mm -hmm. Can I ju just add here that, that this is probably so far our like uh, killer use case. Like obviously people see, see the most value with this so far. I guess that we'll be able to excite them with uh, other things, but uh, till now this is uh, this is the thing that, that was well, I mean, it, it, it turns out it's not just even those particular examples. It's all the things you can do over a virtual layer three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ex exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, not, I, not the examples, the VO3. Yeah, I mean, I, I had conversations with people who were interested in doing cloud native storage, multi, you know, multi-cloud cloud native storage that way. People who are interested in doing multi-cloud telemetry collectors, um, you know, that way. It just turns out to solve a whole host of problems. And what we have right now is a sort of a, a very rough proof of concept uh, POC of it um, that needs a lot of smoothing out um, to turn into a nice smooth example people can use in the, the 0 0.3 release. Yeah, but it's super exciting. Um, then we, we've also got the very first screen shoots on the SRIO VVFs. Um, you know, uh, Zemek, who pushed this patch, marked it as both POC and work in progress. So I would encourage folks to go take a look at it. Um, but, you know, we, we do understand that we've got a lot of work to do in the community getting that across the finish line. But the fact that he has actual working code uh, means that it'll probably be fairly straightforward. It's just going to be a simple matter of working together as a community to get it there. But that will allow us to drop both SRIO VVS with user space and if you want them kernel space, SRIO VVFs into, um, into pods as ends of a V-wire, which is very, very exciting. Not just for the NFE use cases, but if you're gonna, you know, there are lots of folks who, you know, who want that in enterprise use cases as well. And this gives you a nice clean sane way to do it. Um, so one of the use cases, which uh, you said the NFV somehow is, um, we are going to need this and we already do something similar, not in the best cloud native way in the CNF test bed. So uh, improving the examples there will be really, really, I mean, this will be really, really helpful for us to improve the examples. That's literally the next line, <laughs> right? Um, which is uh, once the SRO okay. PDF stuff is in place, then the only remaining piece oh. of CNF test bed is yeah. you would want an ENSM that can manipulate packets, very simple REST API for their networking. And, and at that point, it, it's, it all falls into place. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 okay. We can probably di 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 discuss this uh, offline. Totally, totally. Uh, I mean, we can probably just go with the straight SRV without the ENSM and then not the ENSM on top of that. But okay, that's probably details. <laughs> yep, yep, B baby steps, baby steps, got mm -hmm. it. All right. <clears throat> Uh, and then I added the, the last one because we, we kind of postponed this one to move our API to beta so that we know uh, that uh, we have stable-ish API and the last bits are essentially uh, related to, oh, we don't have this one here. Oh, no, the, 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 the first one. Finish NSM forwarder, cross-connect NSC reflector. Refactor. Refactor. You, oh, okay. You, you would think I could spell things in my native language, but you'd be wrong. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I I called this feature uh, cross connect uh, as a network service, but okay, uh, um, everyone has their own I, namings, I guess. I, I'm perfectly fine to to figure out <laughs> how we want to call it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's just like describing to people what 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 this is about, but okay. Yeah, so what, what actually makes me happy about this plan is that although there are kind of core refactorings, there is no like big, oh, okay, yeah, okay, probably the, the OPA policy would be, uh, I was just going to say that there's not going to be a big change in our core code, but okay. <laughs> well, Maybe. I mean, the, the, the OPA policy really is, is just, it, it, it should be a decorator on things. Um, and I don't think it's so much a matter of the changes in the core code. I think the core patterns stay more or less the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So uh, maybe maybe we should ask Andre to tell us here what are his plans about the healing V2, which was a thing for a while. Um, yeah, it's actually really depend on the refactoring for the same forwarder mm -hmm. before we can start actually. Okay. Uh, and probably it will require some uh, small changes in VSDK since at the moment we have leak of a healing when we do SDK and point to uh, like forwarder connections. We don't monitor for the next uh, chained items and for a proper recovery for uh, such kind of scenarios, uh, we need to have chained contexts uh to be uh, inside a connection object okay. so probably we will wait for an sm forward refactoring first before we'll start changing in the healing mm -hmm. okay so i guess that we keep this as a higher level goals and then maybe we can add to that list uh as things come our, our way. Yep. So, so something that I would love to see is, I'd love to see us uh, make a concerted push towards uh, reaching incubating. And my recommendation towards that is we pick the easiest use case that has high value to people. And we, we start with that. You know, like what's the, uh, uh, yeah, what, what what is that first thing that gets people split in the door? So I think my my, my recommendation based on the NSM con stuff, I see, you know, b borrowing from from our friends, is we start with uh, with a use case like how do you do database replication uh, across multiple uh, multiple clusters? And I am I suggest we start with uh, with. Uh, that that one particular path, and we have some friends that that are in other communities who are very interested in in helping us with this uh, for a uh, Amsterdam uh, release date. And so, so I think that if we can if we can nail that use case, especially using one of the one of the groups who's interested with with working with us, then I, I think that we can easily get our our three production users and then that's the only thing that's gating us at this point of becoming incubating yeah i would i would love for us to be incubating in time for boston uh that would be fantastic if we can arrange that mm -hmm. yeah uh, and the the requirements on that are like we, we pretty much hit, hit hit every every major Every, every major one like in fact we were already working on the requirements for for, for graduated and so uh granted I, I think we can say incubating for a while because we'll be in a very good company so uh, examples of other incubating projects are etcd and grpc um which absolutely get production use and so we don't have to rush to to graduate it but we should rush to to incubating and so we can work out the happy path uh, to to that and uh, and build and, and build that out and get that tested. Uh, 
like I, I think will be in an excellent position for, for Boston. But I think Amsterdam has to be that uh, has to be that deadline for for that happy path because that's where we're going to convince people to to give it a try. Okay. Okay. Is is there anything else that we want to talk about on on what do we want? Uh, and we covered timing to a to a degree. Um, should we talk about uh, naming? Yeah. I mean, the one thing I would say with timing is that Nikolai put together a really well thought out scheme for timing that we failed to follow this time around. I'd like to try and see if we can get a crisper statement of timing so we can actually follow good process this time. Does that make sense, Nikolai? Yeah, yeah, means uh, we, we sort of just crashed through the wall this time, and and I'd rather be more orderly. Yeah, uh, it was just like a lot of events. I don't know if it's going to be easier for next uh, race. Um, I don't think there's so many events between now and Cube County EU. Well, I guess Mobile World Congress did not help us. Yeah, I mean we we. We would love to do something within the CNF test, but more of a like I don't know, packet gateway, whatever, uh, for Mobile World Congress. So that's not on the what we want to do list here, but um, um, I don't know. At least I I I would like to see this uh, uh, to show up there with the uh, uh, NSM and the CNF test bed and be able to demo something. And yeah. And then uh, actually a month, so it's it's an interesting series of events. So uh, a, a month before KubeCon, we have Mobile World Congress and month after KubeCon, we have uh, Open Networking Summit. So <laughs> it's kind of, uh, yeah. Oh, oh my. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's going to be, yeah, Mobile World Congress is its own special kind of circus. Yeah, uh, I know. But. I still think that I, I agree with, with um, what uh, Fred said that we need this keyword use case, happy pattern, whatever. But um, at least for me, the as I, I think I said it on stage on NSMCOM, this this kind of duality of the the nature of uh, NSM, like the enterprise and the um, the service provider telco kind of hardcore networking uh, is. I think that we need to preserve it and push it some kind of, kind of uh, two together. I can understand that the telco people are um, harder to please <laughs> and convince, uh, but I think that it's it's in a longer term, this is something that, that's going yeah, to pay I, a lot. I, I think it ends up being better for everybody if we solve in both spaces instead of solving them separately. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, what I what I found uh, because I, I get to straddle both the uh, the enterprise and uh, and telecom world is uh, both sides are very receptive to the fact that the other side is uh, is considering NSM. And so when I talk with the enterprise people and they talk about oh, but we needed to be performant, and it's like well, the telecom people know a lot about network performance. And when I talk with the telecom people and we talk, start talking about things like security and, uh, and ease of use of management of their, of their systems, then I get to lean on the enterprise side and say, look, the enterprise people are considering us for, for similar reasons. It follows those patterns. And so there's this, uh, this virtuous cycle that occurs between them both, but it's not just about the marketing side. It's that with those, uh, those themes trickle into the project itself because we're actively supporting both, uh, both paths. And so that means we have to be fast. We have to be secure. We have to be easy to manage and easy to scale out and, and so on. Uh, because otherwise we will lose one or the other uh, or possibly both. And so, so the, having, having uh, strong demands from both sides uh, gives us that diversity of use cases, which which absolutely helps us in that path. And so um, I'm, going to I'm going to continue working with the telecoms as well in order and the that entire community in order to, to try to, in order to try to help them. <coughs> and so like right now, I know we spoke a little bit on the enterprise side, but uh, yeah, there, there is 
some work that is being done towards mobile world congress or uh, they are talking about uh, some set of demos. I don't have the full scope of that just yet. Uh, I should have that soon. And I need to talk with Ben as well to see what am I allowed to to release or not release because he may have certain things that he may not uh, want announced yet. Uh, but uh, I, I would prefer to try to do as much in the open rather than uh, rather than behind closed doors. So um, and that and so we'll 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 see how all that how all that plays out. But uh, you know I I think continue to continue interactions with the telecom user group and other similar uh, and other similar groups will will help us and will absolutely help us in the in the long run. Great. Is there so, anything well, else? Sorry, go on. Yeah, I I just I just just wanted to add that uh, what what I see here in this plan are two 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 very strong um, oh, points. I mean, I think that all of these are kind of strong, and we we'll, if we're able to execute them by March, we will definitely have a really interesting uh, and hard time to find the the uh, only five cool things that we can do <laughs> for the things we have to do ten things that we can do. Uh, with NSM. So uh, what what I found here, what I wanted to kind of highlight is that we're finally bringing the hardware on the table because this is something that uh, NSM has been proposing for a long time. And if we are able to do SRUV, and I'm sure that we will be able now with the support of the uh, great people from Intel. Um, and uh, if we also manage to do some form of a ENSM, whatever that means, um, yeah. I think that, that this is, um, yeah, a kind of a strong, strong, strong uh, message to everyone. Okay, let's let's move forward because we spend too much time here. I think. Well, this is the last item on the agenda, so uh, we can spend as much time as we like. <laughs> uh, for the... the last item is naming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so let's see. Um, so we're looking for C-based um, constellations. And C++. they don't have to be part of the 88 uh, standard constellations. They can be one of the more minor constellations, such as um, Borealis Corona was an example of one such uh, uh, constellation. Um, they, I, they also don't have to be part. I, I suspect that you, normally when we talk about constellations, there's a bunch of constellations that come from sort of the Greek Latin tradition, um, but they, they could also be part of constellations from other traditions like the Indian or, or Chinese or others. That also works. Absolutely. And uh, if we find that we don't have a letter or the constellation appears to be inappropriate because it's uh, associated with some bad context, mm. uh, we can pick other things in the sky as well. So. We have we have stars, we have uh, nebulas. You know, there's a whole wide range of different things. Uh, but since we're starting with um, with uh, constellations, uh, C uh, has a lot of constellations. So we're we're gonna we're gonna have a hard time choosing this uh, this time. Um, some of the ones that stand out to me are we have. Um, Cassiopeia, we have Centaurus, Cephas, we have, uh, this one will make the, uh, the Volk people very happy. We have Canis Major and Minor. Um, and so, so we, we have, we have a lot, oh, and uh, there's also Canis uh, Venatasi, which are hunting dogs. Uh, but no, we have a lot of, a, a lot of uh, choices, so. Okay. Not urgent right now. Yeah, but yeah. Start, start the conversation. Start mm -hmm. thinking of things. Start uh, looking into the backgrounds because the uh, we, we I'd love to to see a story behind it, like uh, the uh, borealis uh, being the crown of Ariadne just fit perfectly into into the narrative. Mm -hmm. And so. Cool is. Well, with that, is um, is there anything else on on naming, or should we move on to Q and A? 
Okay, Q and A it is. Uh, anyone have any questions? Cool. If there are no questions, we can go ahead and uh, close this particular this particular meeting up. Um, okay. With that, I want to thank everyone for for attending, and I, we will see you all again next week at the same time. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Thanks. You bye. Bye.